Somebody raise it up, say, you
Hallelujah. Good morning. Can we stand on our feet and give God some praise in this place? Hallelujah. Can we stand on our feet and give God some praise in this place? It's good that we just come into the house. But listen, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So this morning, if you're glad, can you open up your mouth and give God one shout of praise this morning? Can we give God a hallelujah this morning? Can we give God a Shabbat this morning? Meaning, can we can we set the atmosphere? Can we just stir up the atmosphere this morning with our mouth, with our mouthpiece? Because we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't, we couldn't thank you enough this morning, God. And we thank you now. Father, we thank you now. God, we ask that you come into this room on this morning. We invite you into the room on this morning, God. We make a highway for you to come down, God, to the empowerment center. God, we thank you now. We thank you. We're about on the verge. Can we just continue to open up our mouth? Hallelujah. Let's continue to praise God this morning. Let's continue to stir the water up this morning for sign, miracles, signs, and wonders to happen. Hallelujah. There we go. There we go. We on the edge. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you now. We thank you now. God, we press, God. We press this morning. We press this morning. We press. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Listen, we want to say welcome to the Empowerment Center where God owns everything. Listen, we want to welcome you guys, our online visitors. We want to welcome you guys here into the building as well. Listen, it's another Sunday to be alive. I feel like David when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, this is a place where miracle signs and wonders are happening. This is also a place of freedom. Listen, and we understand and we know that wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we know that he reigns in this place. He rules in this place. And anytime we come in contact with him, we're never leaving the same. This is the place where you get your empowerment. Amen. Listen, we're about to go into intercessory prep. But I need a couple of things. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to like. I need you to share. I need you also to comment. Also, I need you to tag as many people as you can. If you're in the building at this time, I'll ask that you pull your phones out. Hit that share button. Hit that like button. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Frank Bussey on YouTube. We're also on Facebook, the Empowerment Center International Ministries. We're also on Instagram as well. That's at ECIM Family via Instagram. Also, we have our very own church app that we want you guys to stay tuned with us. With. It's, a, it's called the Empowerment Center Church app. The Empowerment Center Church app. You can get it on all platforms. We want you to go create a login. Don't just create a login, but come in and be a family. Also, that all of our ECIM uh, news will be on there for us. Upcoming events, uh, current events as well. It will be on there. And also, we're here every Sunday at 10 a.m. And we're here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Listen, the Bible says where there's two or three gathered in the midst, he's there. So I need you to do me a favor. Before we go into in intercessory prayer, I want you to stir the water up at your home. I want you to stir the water up if you're in the room this morning. We ask this morning, don't just watch her as she pray. I want you to just walk around the room. Go grab your prayer partner. If you're standing next to somebody, grab their hands. Because the Bible says where there are two or three gathered. And I know we have more than two or three in this brick building on today, man. So as the woman of God begins to pray today, we ask that heaven be open. We ask that you guys move around. We ask that you guys participate. So listen, none other than we're about to have my big sister that's about to lead us in intercessory prayer. None other than Minister Keisha Webb. Hallelujah. Let's give her a hand. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're in this building, can you open up your mouth and begin to praise God? Come on, open up your mouth and begin to praise God. Come on, can you give him the fruit of your lips? Can you begin to tell him something sweet on this morning? Hallelujah. Did anybody come with a praise? Come on, I said open up your mouth and give God praise in this building. Hallelujah. Come on, can you magnify him in this place? Can you make him big on this morning? Hallelujah. Can you put yourself aside for a second? Come on, can you welcome the king in this building? We worship you on this morning, oh God. We welcome you in this place. We magnify you. We lift you up on this morning. We glorify you. We call you into this place. We we make room for you all today. We welcome you as the king that you are. We call you into this place. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. You are welcome, you are welcome. You are welcome, you are welcome. You are welcome. The cry of our heart on this morning is that you are welcome. We don't want to do anything without you. Without 
straight. We pray that the angels would stir the water in this place. We pray now that the Hittimaya, that the Hittimaya, that the waters would be stirred in this place. We pray that miracle signs and wonders would break out. We pray for a baptism of Hittimaya, a baptism of the Holy Ghost. May your fire
on the devil this morning. Can we make some noise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God, have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. a party this morning. want to welcome you to the empowerment center where God owns everything where the place you come to be empowered if you need your finances empowered this is the place to be if you need your mind to be empowered this is the place to be if you need your family to be empowered this is the place to be amen hallelujah hallelujah we want to welcome you welcome you welcome you listen at this time if you haven't seen us all week long if you miss wednesday if you miss the scene of monday tuesday thursday friday this is the time where you get to grow in one another we get to gain strength from one another amen so listen i need you to do me a favor if you're sitting in the back come up to the front a little bit if you're sitting in the middle let's come up to the fire this morning but before you guys do that i want you to come out and get out of your seats this morning go hug on somebody go love on somebody because we understand listen sometimes our weapon is by just fellowshipping with one another the bible says uh, we gain strength from one another, amen. So if you can at this moment, we have an amazing keyboard player that's going to continue to keep playing, an amazing drummer that's going to continue to keep playing, and we want you guys to please, please go show some love, amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, we're about to make a couple of announcements, then we're about to jump into, jump back into the fire. Listen, if you can, um, every Monday and every Wednesday at 6 p.m., we're having our praise dance um, with Miss Kim Studd still. If you want your child to desire, if you, if you desire for your child to, to join and be a part of something that's amazing, please see her after service. She'll give you more information. So that's Mondays and Wednesdays. Our youth is, in, you know, involved in that praise dance. Also, um, It's a fun time. Didn't they do an amazing job last Sunday? Amen. Amen. Bring your kids out to participate so we can continue doing and worshiping God. Awesome. Um, I got I got a couple of announcements. I got two more, and then we're going to jump back into it. Miss Vanessa, come up. You can. Um, First Lady, I know she's still hugging and still smiling on people. But our very own Miss Vanessa Turner, and Lady Lakeisha Bussey, they have been a, they have been nominated within our community. They have been nominated, and I think the event is this Saturday, correct? The 13th. Um, can we just show some love to them? Can we just stand on our feet and show some love to our very own? Hallelujah. They definitely deserve it. They put in that hard work. Um, and we want to say we celebrate you guys. I know y'all running against each other, but I hope I wish both of y'all can win. Um, say that again, first lady. They say they ain't running against each other. They running together, amen. So listen, we want to we want to say we celebrate you guys. Continue to doing the great work of the Lord. Um, and my last. My last announcement. My last annou announcement is is April the 28th. April 28th, that's the last Sunday of the month. We'll be having our seed, uh, seed sowing Sunday. Um, that'll be our super seed Sunday. Make sure if you can, listen, this is going to be something that we pay off the building with. This is the year we're going to be debt free. We're claiming debt free. Can everybody say debt free? Oh, y'all got to say it with some Holy Ghost. Say debt free. One more time for the Holy Ghost. Say debt free. So listen, on April the 28th, we need you guys to make sure that you grab one of these envelopes before the April 28th and make sure you put your, your whatever God has laid up on your heart. Don't just give him anything. Don't just give him anything. Give him what he's desiring to give to you all. So make sure you grab one of these uh, um, particular envelopes. See the deacons. Also, you can see the uh, finance committee. But we're about, to, we're about to worship some more. So if you can, you can stand on your feet and we're about to have Minister Turner as she's continuing to lead us in worship. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship you. Can we go around higher? Jesus. Empowerment Center. Can we go around higher in our praise? Yes. Isn't he worthy? Yes. Isn't he worthy of all our praise? I don't know about you, but sometimes we give our best. We give all our energy into other things, like our children, our jobs. Anything that we love doing, sometimes we go to the football games and we get we don't miss a beat, we, we don't miss a game. But sometimes when it comes to the Lord, sometimes we slack a little bit. Let's try to do better with that. Let's try to make sure that we're praising him more. We're putting him first yes. in everything that we do. Even our praise and our worship, we're praising him more. Yes. Because y'all know if we don't, y'all know what will. The rocks will cry out. Because my God, he's going to be praised. And I don't know about you, but I won't let a rock Hallelujah. cry out for me. No, 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 I won't. <laughs> hey. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all know this. This is, about, this is almost our Hallelujah. anthem right here. We don't let rocks cry out for us here. Hallelujah, Jesus. I can't deny what you've done for me. Loosed up my shackles and set me free. Wrote me and gave me the victory. I got a reason, a reason to praise. I can't forget what my eyes have seen. What seemed impossible, I believe. Look at my life, we got his story. I got a reason, a reason to praise. So I won't let a rock cry. Not what 
to move about the room, to do as you see fit, to walk through the corners of our minds, to heal the sick, to deliver them that are bound, to set the captives free, and if it is accepted, set them on you the Lord. Walk through it and just throw your weight around like you're over the board. Show our situation, our circumstances, that you are God. And beside you, there are no others. So we worship you, we honor you, we thank you because you're reliable, trustworthy, accountable, dependable, faithful, loving, adorable. You're everything that we would ever need. And for that, we just say thank you. We love you and we bless you. Amen. How many were created to pray? Amen. Clothed in my right mind. Having activities of my limb. Praise God. Amen. Got my own self dressed this morning. Amen. Speaking of attire, we're just setting the culture here. Amen. So if you see us on first Sunday, some first Sundays, amen, we're setting the culture here. Doing something new here for us. For us. May not be new in the world, but it's new for us. Amen. So we're definitely developing and growing and amen becoming all that God will have us to become and I'm excited about that can you give God a great good God bless you amen because I want to dive into the word amen I've been up since five o'clock this morning getting into this word amen because and I'm ready to amen share this word Father, we do thank you once again for all of the people that are present, for those who are watching by way of social media. We thank you for giving us the ability to be able to share the gospel with your people. We pray that whatever is said today, it is said with integrity and excellence. It is said in love and ministered in a way that it captivates the minds of your people. That they come, that those that come or those that are watching will never be the same again. May we have new vision, new new perceptions of your word and what it means to transform and through your word in Jesus name amen amen glory to God hallelujah bless it one more time as you take your seats I want to dive into this word today I'm excited about it and I want to share something with you it won't be before you long because we want to take communion today amen and and get into the power of communion and share in on that because Jesus said we should all often do that in remembrance of him but I want to talk to you today about transformation. We're starting our new series in April, transformation series in April. Amen. It's our new series, transformation series. And we'll be talking about transformation this month because I believe it's something that we have got to come to, to terms with that there are a lot of us who are 
in transformation or in transition, but we are somewhere in what God has showed me, we are stuck in the process of transformation and transition. Transformation and transition is two cousin words. I mean, they have to, you have, there's no real transformation without transition. So where there are some, even when I was in the, in the midst of intercessory prayer, I, I picked in the spirit that there are many who are stuck in the transformation or the transition process. Like you're going through the canal, but you're stuck in the process of transforming. And so if you never transform into where God is calling you into or the next phase of your life, and then that, that inability to transform will cause you to never see or fulfill what God has called you to fulfill. So you will live a life, but you will never live it to the, to the fullness of what God has called you to live it to. Because you're stuck in the process. It's almost like you're coming through a canal, a birth canal or something, and you get stuck in the midst of the birth canal. You're coming out of one place into another place. I remember when, when me and my wife had our first child, our oldest child, um, our oldest child, when we had her, um, she was having some trouble coming through the canal. So that so Dr. Ami had to do some adjustments to make to allow her to be able to come through. There are some of you who are stuck in the process of where you were and where you're going. You're stuck in the process of where you were and where you're transitioning or transforming into. And so that place there is, I hope, as a surgeon today through the word of God I'm able to help you transition and transform into the next phase of your life so you can experience what God has for you amen somebody so I want to share that with you today and I want to go right into the book of John the 12th chapter but before I do while you're pulling up the book of John the 12th chapter let's look at the month of April because I want to just shout welcome to the month of April this is the month of where, where, where we see where the number four. The number four represents the month of creation. When it, not just creation, but where, where it's creation and stability and order is formed. It's a month that, represents, that has representation of humanity, where God ha, has, has also has divine revelation flows in this particular month. So this is a month of, of very, uh, things that are going to be very significant in the area of creation of like global uh, government, where God had, where God deals with things globally. So we'll see this month where God releases uh, uh, help, and it'll be something that happens globally. And it also represents a place where God has uh, omnipresence, where wherever you are, you should find God's help. So it doesn't matter if you're in a valley moment. This is the month that you'll find God's help. Even on the, on the mountaintop, you'll find God's help because this is a month where God brings stability and order, completeness and wholeness. So I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is going to do this month. Amen. But let's go to the book of John 12 chapter, verse number 24 and 26, and I want to talk to you about transformation. The Bible says, most assuredly, I, I say to you, unless... A grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there may my servant will be also. There I am, where I am, there my servant will be also. If any man serves me, him my father will honor. Take me back to verse number 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Thank you. Bless the Lord one more time for me. Well, let's go ahead and grab our other scripture so you can go and be seated and you don't have to worry about standing back up again. Jeremiah 29 and 11, and it reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace 
and not of evil to give you an expected end or to give you a future and a hope. Okay, right there. Now you can celebrate God and then you can take your seat. Amen. Oh, yeah, I like that. Amen. I want to talk to you about transformation. Because here Jesus is sharing us with sharing a parable and he's talking about this particular seed, a corn, a grain of wheat that falls to the ground. And he says something that unless this grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, that it will abide alone. But if it falls and if it dies, it then now can produce much fruit. Now it goes through a transformation. It transforms from being a grain to fruit. Meaning it grows from being transformed from being a something singular to multiplying. So the power of multiplication to be able to multiply, then there is something that the Bible has put into principles called something must die first. So there is first in the power of transformation, something has to die first because you have to leave one place to go to another place. Or you have to transform from one place or one thing or one, one subject or some, some entity to something else. In other words, you have to move from one spot to the next. I, I remember, I know y'all may be too young for this, but I remember a thing called, uh, um, I believe it was called jumping jacks. I'm not really sure if that was it, but I remember you had like one, two, three blocks. I think it was something like this. It went like, you throw something, and that, what was that? That was hopscotch. I'm sorry, hopscotch. Thank you, somebody. Praise God. It was hopscotch. It was hopscotch. You, you would put something on number one, but you had to jump on number two. Whoa. Number three, then you can do that. Then it's back to one. Then I think it was something else. Then you turn around. Then you can turn around. Right. And you go back. But to get to the end, you had to go from one to two to three to four or wherever it was. But you were moving. So transformation without transition is just stuck because here's what happens if you trans you transition and don't transform. And that's what we have today in the body of Christ. We have a lot of people who transition but don't transform. Transition means you move from one place to the next place, but you didn't change. Okay, I thought I was going to get an amen, but uh, that, that might have hit, that might have touched some, some, some tender places. But you trans, when you transform, transition, there's a, there's a need to transform while you are transitioning. And so he uses this analogy about a corn of wheat that falls to the ground and die. Die means to cease to exist. It means it gives up all of its living capabilities of power. It gives up all of its strength and its will. And it yields it over to whatever as now has control. It means it gives up all of its ability to be able to pull itself from where it's at. It is now depending on something else. And that is the one place where people get stuck at, in the, stuck, in the part of dying. Because dying means sometimes you got to die to self-will. Things that you desire. Things that you want. Things that you have a passion for in order to transition. Because some things that you have that you are attached to can't grow with you. The corn must lose the outing of its shell if it's going to multiply. It has to lose what's covering it if it's going to multiply. It has to lose what's make, what makes it comfortable if it's going to multiply. It has to lose what gives its existence or its identity if it's going to multiply. If you don't, if you, if you, if you are too afraid to lose who you are, you will never become who he's calling you to be. If you are afraid to lose who you are, who you are connected to, who you are running with, 
If it is a part of your destiny to transform and transition, everybody and everything can go with you. And it is the dying state, which is the first thing that you have to do in order to be able to transition. It's to die to self. Or you stay alone. Meaning that you go without help. There is no multiplying power to be able to help you become what you have been called to become. And so God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that I have thoughts and plans toward you. But to get to those thoughts or that expected end, the first thing that has to happen is to die. That is not a natural death. That is Frank has to die to Frank's own will. If Frank is going to ever become what God has expected Frank to become, Frank must die to self. That's when he becomes a donor. We call him a donor or we call him Lord or Master, but we still run our own path. And so there, the only way to really get the expected in is to die of self. Or you can't multiply. Or he can't help you because you, you, you abide alone. But now he uses this analogy of a corn, of wheat. Now something happens whenever, whenever a seed is planted in the ground. Something happens. There's a process. Somebody shout process. That happens is a twofold process because something happens simultaneously. A seed grows in two directions at the same time. It's one process called gravotropic. The other is phototropic. He uses the analogy that represents you and I, that we have gravotropic and phototropic, but we grow at the same time. Whenever a seed of tree is planted in the ground, this is what happens. It starts growing by, to get roots, so it grows downward. Gravotropic means the pulling down of, in order to be able to get stability and nourishment. It must grow downward. But while it's growing downward, it's also phototropic. It grows toward the light. So as a believer, I am called to become, if I want to grow and produce fruit, I must grow downward and get a foundation. But at the same time, I must grow upward to the light. If it's called stretching. You're pulled in two different directions. One is to stabilize you. The other one is to enlighten you. So you're being, you're being, you're getting stability. And at the same time, he's giving you inspiration, information, and instructions. And to get it, you have to die first. Because the truth of the matter is, how we thought we were going to get there, how we thought he was going to do it, sometimes it's not his ways. Isaiah 55 says, my ways and my thoughts are not yours. They are higher. And as long as we're trying to figure out, we're never going to jump. But let me tell you what transition is. Transition is a process of changing and converting something. Often re resulting in something significant, a shift in form or structure or appearance. It could be a profound change in a person's belief or behaviors or their attitudes. So transformation, whenever you are in the presence of God and you are planted in the house of God, you're supposed to be transforming and a part of your transforming, your behavior changes. So you can't be, you can't have the same attitude that you had when you first came and, you, you know, five years ago 
five months ago, five weeks ago, and you have the same behavior now. That's a transformation, transition flaw. That is someone, watch this, that are growing in years, planted here in 23, growing in years 24, 25, 26, 27. You're growing in years, but your attitude never changed. So you didn't kill the part you brought to the altar that you didn't like when you came. Because most of us, when we come to him, it's because there's something in our life we don't like. We don't just wake up. You know what? I think I'm going to be saved. No. A lot of us, is some stuff in our life that we didn't like and we needed some change. But the problem is that when we come to him and we plant ourselves in him, that we begin to grow in years. But attitude don't change. Y'all quiet. Behaviors don't change. You shouldn't have the same, you shouldn't have the same bad habits that you had when you got started. That's called, that's called somebody growing and they're immature. You know how you know how sad it'll be to have somebody that's 30 years old and they still act like they're a child. Transformation is you have to transform from an infant to a toddler, from a toddler to an adolescent, from an adolescent to a a child or somewhere an adult, young adult, to an adult. But every stage, you have to leave something. You got to leave the infant stage to go here. Because if you don't, you're 30 years old and still on milk. No transformation. Transitioning, shifting in time, shifting in positions, moving from one position to the next, but no transforming of attitude and behavior. Habits. Mm. So anybody that doesn't have the ability to trans transform properly is underdeveloped. That means if the same things makes you mad and do you still have the same buttons the enemy be pushing to get you to say what you say to cause your attitude and this is the shoes we use. That's just me. No, that's just your undeveloped self. That's your inability to transform into the light of his glory. You still want to be the person you were 50 years ago or five years ago or five months ago. And he's trying to bring you to a higher level of glory. You still, you want to be represented in the realm of the glory of who he is in Adonis' glory. You want him to shine the glory on you, but you don't want to die from your old self. So you want him to put the stamp of approval on you, but you still want to be tied to your old self. I don't know about you, but Frank can't be old Frank because what old Frank used to do, God can't use it. Frank has to transition and transform into what God has call, is calling him into. Why? Because I know it don't matter to everybody, but somebody going to have a problem if Frank still go to the same place that Frank used to go to. If Frank's still doing the same things Frank used to do. It is in the power of transformation, it involves, watch this, here's the struggle, overcoming obstacles. Sometimes we don't want to transform because transform means we got to kill something. We got to overcome the obstacle that's in our way. 
It would be easy following God if you can follow God and still have the same habits. But the problem is he wants to bring you and ship you to a higher level, a higher realm of glory. But it requires transforming. That means shifting something. Somebody shout shift. Somebody shout develop. Go through the process. Watch this. Letting go old patterns. The reason why you can't have old patterns is because the Bible says that when you transform, you are not of them any longer of them of, that are predictable. Meaning that the enemy don't, can't find your tracks because your tracks changed. Your direction changed. Because if you don't change it, he knows your triggers. He knows what stirs you up. He know what kind of man you like. He knows what kind of woman you like. He know what kind of alcohol you like. I know this ain't the shirt. I'm, we talking about somebody online. I know we ain't talking about nobody here. It's the people online. He knows what makes you cuss when you get mad. Roll your eyes. Like shame when you get mad. Now, I know Shannon, Shannon's still working in her transition. She probably was the one that God showed me was stuck. I'm like, listen here, watch this now. I'm down there trying to dance, minding my own business. My legs tired. I've been on the road. Been gone yesterday. My legs tired. I couldn't quite get them up like I want to. She's supposed to be up here worshiping. She laughing at me. She forgot I was going to get the microphone because I couldn't hardly pick my legs up. They were tired. She ain't transitioned yet because, see, if she had transitioned, she would have prayed for me. She would have been, I might not go past her legs, past her legs, past the legs, and gave me some strength. She wasn't trying to give me no strength. She was trying to shine the light on me so people can see I had lost my rhythm. But the power of transformation, it symbolizes personal growth how are you growing this month is about personal growth our spiritual growth how are we growing how are we growing how are we transforming how are we moving from stage to stage level to level Tongues change, but attitude don't change. Mm. Watch this. You know what it says about being able to transform and change? It creates new opportunities, new insights, and new possibilities. But with transformation, it has to be transition. Transition to move from one state, condition, or situation to another is moving from. I'm moving from being easily offended to being able to handle criticism. Nothing helped me grow up more than folk talking about me, lying on me. When it was all said and done, I grew up. I transitioned from worrying about what people say, being offended by what people say, being bothered by what people say. I left that place, died from that person, and became another person. So I'm not moved by what people say. I'm not, ever, I'm not even offended by it. That's why I can love people. I don't care what they say about me. I know how to love you because I died from easily offenses. I don't build fences up and try to keep people out because I was offended. That's an immature believer. You're supposed to move from faith to faith and glory to glory. This month is a month of growth. We're going to move and shift. 
We ain't cussing folks out because they get the parking spot in Walmart and we were sitting there waiting on it. I don't cuss, but I'm just trying to see who do. I didn't have to cuss. I had a cousin that would cuss for me. My cousin Steve would cuss for me. He learned it from his mama. My Aunt Dane, she probably watched it. My Aunt Dane was good at cussing. She could make a whole paragraph with nothing but cuss words. But she, 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 she got it right now. She saved now. But in, 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 in once she got saved, she could spot a, spot a spirit. I mean, she could spot a spirit like it wasn't nothing. Walk through the door, she said, mm, ain't nothing but old dumb spirit. So look at that boy. She got a stupid spirit. That ain't nothing but an ignorant spirit you got right there. She learned how to spot spirits. She transitioned. But watch this now. Transition has three phases, and I'm almost out of your way because it's just a, it's just a foundation I'm laying today. Number one is ending. Second phase is neutral zone phase. Transition in the third phase is new beginning phase. The first phase and ending phase it involves acknowledging and accepting the end of a thing. It involves in letting go of familiar routines, attitudes, relationships. It means you evaluate something in your life to see what needs to end so you can move to the next spot. If there was a thing with different chairs and you had different chairs and, and you had to get up out of one chair if you're going to go into the next chair. You have to leave this chair to get to this chair. You can't stay here and try to get there. You have to be willing to give up this seat for the next seat. You have to be willing to give up where you are to get to where God is calling you to. And that comes with dying to a thing, which means let some stuff die. The power of transformation is being able to allow things to die so it can grow something new. And God wants to grow something new in us, but we don't want to die to what's old. We want God to do it anyway. But he's not a do it anyway kind of God. He's a, I'll wait to see if you want it bad enough to let go of where you are and leave where you are. It's almost like he's trying to tell you that if you jump, I got you. But you want him to come and get you where you are. But he's like, no, you got to jump first. But you're not willing to jump first because you're afraid to let go of the comfort zone that you have now. You don't know what's in the jump, but you have to learn how to jump anyway. That's transition. If you're going to transition, you got to jump. Somebody say jump, jump. But you have to be willing to bring some things to an end. It can't stay there. When I got married, a lot of things came to the end. My wife became number one. My mama still my girl, but my wife is my first responsibility. My sister, my road dog, my A1 since day one. But my wife is my first responsibility. I had to let go of everything I ever learned, everything I ever been through, all the things that I've been through and who I've been through it with, I had to let them all go if I was going to embrace what God had for me next. And the problem we have today is people don't want to let go. And the second thing is neutral. Am I helping anybody? 
The second phase is the neutral zone phase. That's once you did decide to let go, and now you're moving to another phase. The neutral zone phase is a phase that will cause you to run back to the beginning because the neutral zone phase is a waiting process because you don't go straight into a new beginning. You go into a neutral zone phase. Once you leave one place, if you leave one job, you don't go into another job automatically knowing everything. There's a neutral zone phase. And the neutral zone phase is where you now do self-evaluation. Now you got to see exactly, you know, what are my new, my new possibilities are. Because now you're in a place that's not absolutely clear. It's uncertain because you're, in a, you're headed to a new place. So you don't know what the next phase is going to look like. And so you go in not knowing exactly what the next phase will look like, but you're there. And sometimes people enter into a phase that they don't know what it looked like and what do they do? Run back to what was familiar. Children of Israel in the middle of the wilderness, things didn't look well. They went back. They wanted to go back to what was familiar. They wanted to go back to bondage. They wanted to go back into slavery. They wanted to go back to what they were crying to get out of. Some of us beg God to bring us out of things. Beg God to transform us and transition us in the spirit realm. But then when he put us into what is called that neutral zone to wait now we want to go back to what was familiar because we don't know what he's going to do here. We don't know how it's going to turn out right here. We don't know the end result right here. And that, that, that obscurity bothers us because even though the Bible says walk by faith, not by sight, but we've been living our whole life by sight and we're trying to learn how to walk by faith. So in that neutral zone is where you got to have a lot of faith because you got to know that if God said be here, wait here, stay here, you got to be here, wait here, stay here until the next phase. You got to be willing to wait. It's the waiting period. Somebody shout waiting period. Transformation, transition has waiting periods. You have to wait to see what's next. He don't show you everything at one time. But that is the moment where you grow the most. In the waiting period. You don't grow, you don't grow in the ending. And you don't grow in the new beginning. You grow in the waiting period. While we was in March on Fire, I, was, I didn't have to preach. That was a waiting period. I was growing. Until it's your turn to run your own business, you're growing. Until it's your turn to run your own ministry, you're growing. Until it's your turn to become the wife to some man, to become the wife to a husband, you're in your waiting period. You're growing. It should be the time of your life where you are now learning how to become a wife. What the God desires from you as a wife is a time that God is training you how to become a husband. He's now perfecting your attitude. He's sharpening your vision. He's strengthening your hands. In the waiting period. He's putting on muscles and fat on you, getting you strong for what you're getting ready to endure. Because, I, I, you know, I marry people, but I don't think they understand. And I try to tell people when they get married, I don't know why I'm going down this road, but let me just give you this. I tell people it's a difference between the wedding and a marriage. People get so excited about the wedding. But it's a difference between the wedding and the marriage. The wedding, you can decide what color you want. You decide who's going to marry you. You can decide what day you're going to get married on. You can decide what type of dress you're going to wear, how you're going to wear your hair, who's going to do your makeup, where you go, what location you're going to use, who's going, where your reception is going to be. You get to determine all of these things. But the day you leave the church, you don't decide when the enemy is going to show up and try to divide your house. You don't get to decide when situations on your job are going to arise and create frustration. But that's the moment during waiting period that you learn that you don't bring your frustration from your job to your house. 
During the waiting period of your transition, transforming moment, you learn how to handle frustration. You learn how to deal with temptations. You learn how to say no to your flesh. The last phase is the new beginning phase. What God has for us in Jeremiah 29 and 11, the transition is to die for. The expected end is to die for. What's next is to die for. Because until you can die of wherever you are, you could never have what's next. Until you can kill what you have that's alive inside of you that makes you desire what is your what, what you do what you want, you won't have what's next. Because a lot of times God doesn't want what you want. So here is a story in my closing. Superman shows us how to transform. Superman, whom I like, I grew up liking Superman. He is actually born under another name. It is not Clark Kent when he is born. I know you probably knew that, but I just figured I'd throw it out there anyway. He was not born Clark Kent. He was born, his last name was L, E-L. I believe it was Ket, Ket E-L. But he was living in a pla on a planet, fictional, of course, on a planet, Krypton. But something was happening to the planet. So if he is going to survive, he must leave Krypton. So his parents sends him to the earth in a spaceship. He lands in a place called Smallville, Kansas, to some farmers by the name of Kent. They change his name to Clark Kent. So they take him and they start to realize as he grows, he has supernatural strength. They start to realize that his skin is different. And so they begin to tell him as they recognize his abilities that he should use his strength for humanity. You need to use your strength to save the world. So he moves to a place in the metro place, metropolis, so he can save the world. But before he saved the world, Clark Kent is a journalist. He's writing about what's happening in the world. But he can't save the world writing about what's happening in the world. He needs a transformation place. So he develops the desire for a phone booth. Somebody shout a phone booth. He goes into a phone booth as Clark Kent, the journalist who writes about what's happening around the world. He comes out of the phone booth as Superman. He went from being a baby to a toddler to now a journalist and save the world. He cannot save the world as Superman and Clark Kent. 
He must leave Clark Kent in the phone booth if he's going to save the world. Because he can't be worried about writing about the world when he is now called to change the world. Some of us too busy reading what's going on in the world. On your Facebook page, your Snapchat page, your TikTok page, you're busy trying to read what's going on in the world, but you are the light of the world that's called to change the world. And if you don't learn how to transition and mature up into the daughters of Zion or the men of value that God can place his glory on, you won't change the world. You'll continue reading about who's changing the world, who's affecting the world, but you, daughter, you, son, are called to change the world. But you can't change it without transformation. you got to have your cape. You need that special suit on. You can't do it at a typewriter. You got to get, you, get, you got to leave earthbound. And you got to get away from the gravitational pull, what keeps you in the earth, so you can lift up into supernatural realms of faith, so that you can begin to do things for God. Like lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah, like setting the captives free with the power of your words. By taking your anointing and breaking the chains of yoke of people's lives. You can't do that and stay in the same place. He doesn't put his anointing or his grace on somebody that does not transform. You must transform. You must transition if you are going to save the world. Superman was willing to leave Clark Kent in the phone booth so he can become Superman. Why? Not because he had a desire, because he just wanted to be Superman and see what it was like to fly around the world, to go and defeat villains, to overcome everybody that was up against him. No, it was because humanity needed him. Because there was somebody, I know it's fictional, but the reality is some of you are stuck in the canal. And you're stuck in between change and transition. You're stuck in between dying and the neutral zone. Because you don't want to let go of what you have that can't follow you into where you're going. And until you do that, humanity waits on you. That's why the Bible says the earth waits and mourns for the sons and daughters of God to show up. It's time the earth stop waiting on you to show up. It's time for you to find your phone booth, baby. It's time for you to go in and do your transitioning. It's time for you to come out with your cape and your new uniform on, your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness. Shard yourself with the feet of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Take your shield of faith and your sword of the spirit. Gird yourself with the law and the truth. Put your uniform on. Somebody needs to see you transition. There's a drug addict that needs to see you transition. There's an alcoholic that needs to see you transition. There's a marriage that's falling apart that needs you to transition into your superpower so you can do supernatural things. Come on, somebody, you got to get up. You got to get into this thing. It's time to transition. Touch your neighbor, say transition, transition, transition. The earth waiting on you. The earth waiting on you. The earth is waiting on you. Point at and say, you, 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 you. The earth waiting. I know you thought you were just a, no, uh, just a regular somebody, but you ain't made it to your phone booth yet. You had not made it to the phone booth yet. You had not made it to your phone booth. You're ordinary until you get to your phone booth. Get in your phone booth and step out. And word of knowledge will start showing up. Get in the phone booth and watch you start prophesying. Accurate prophecies. Why? Because the Bible says in Joel, in the last days, my sons and my daughters shall prophesy. Where are the sons and daughters that are prophesying? They still sitting in the typewriter reading about 
and writing about what's going on in the world instead of changing the world. Somebody shout transition. Shout transform. Transition. Transform. Don't push them hard, but push them a little bit and say, go through the process. Go through the process. Go through the process. It's time to transform. Minister Ringo, it's time to transform. The world awaits you. But you got to be able to leave the earth to the gravitational pull. Because it'll pull you. And it'll hold you. It's designed to hold you. And when you go up, it's designed to pull you back down. But when you step into supernatural power, It's supernatural stuff up there that you get to see and be a part of to change the world. I was telling my oldest daughter, we was on the phone last, yesterday, I was telling her, I was sharing with her some stuff. I said, go to this particular scripture. And I said, read it. She read it, and I said, go to this particular scripture. She read it, and I began to break it down to her. And I began to tell her, I said, listen, all you have to do is listen to me. I said, my name is not in lights. I don't care for lights, and if God should give me names in lights, that's great. I don't run from it. Neither am I running to it. I say, but I learned the art of principles. I know how to make the word work. And I say, I say, you talking to somebody who can hear. I say, I hear it and see accurately. And I begin to tell her, I say, when your mama was in nursing school and she had failed too many classes, not because she was not smart, because she kept getting pregnant. I said, I told your mama, I said, God going to shut the computers down. And when they come back up, God, God, uh, it's going to be where she can go back to school again. I said, I told your mama that. We were 20-something years old. I said, I'm the same person. Riding through the school during the holidays. I stole your mama. I said, God says it's time. And we drove over to the nursing building. And she went in there. And they said, we can't see who you are because uh, the computers are down. All I said that was to say that I left the earthly bound. I left hanging out with my homeboys. I like hanging out with my boys. I like going fishing with my boys. But my destiny is too important. I got to unlock the mysteries of the world to the people who's in darkness. I can't play around with stuff. I can't play around playing games. People's lives are at stake. I need to be able to tell somebody what God is saying in this hour. I don't need to be playing. People are hurting. People are in a bad place emotionally. And it's time for us to move and shift and transition. There is no time to play games. We got to get the cape on. I like working the supernatural. I couldn't get that when I was with my boys. God didn't show me stuff like that. It was when God showed me a vision. Give me a couple of minutes. I promise I'm going to let you go. He showed me a vision. And in this vision, I was standing in this window. And I saw all of those people that I was friends with was coming to me. And the door beside me on this side was wide open. And 
All of a sudden, I heard the voice of the Lord say, I have something for you, but you got to shut the door. But I was waiting to connect with the people that I've been connected with. But God says, I have something for you, but you got to close the door on them. And as they got closer, I could hear God say, I have something for you, but you got to close the door on them. And I made a conscious decision that I wanted to transition and shift and transform. So I reached over and shut the door. It ain't enough to do it in the spirit. That's play. Minister RJ, let me tell you what I did the next morning when I woke up. I went and found my friends and I told them I'm sorry, but I got to part ways with you. You can continue to do whatever you were doing, but I got to go. I love you, but I got to go. I couldn't just do it in a vision. I went and found them and told them I was transitioning. I was leaving. So I can see what God has for me. There are some of you who God wants to use. But you're stuck in between here and there. And you got to get out of your own way. There's glory over there that God can't put on you here. You got to leave this spot to go to where glory is waiting on you. You have to leave it. Where is God's prophet? Where are God's prophet is at? Where are those that God is calling in this hour? Who is it that God is calling? And saying, come up, come up, come up, come up. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Who is it that God is saying, I have more for you? Just like he told me. And I had to shut the door. And who is he calling? Come on, come out. Transition, make the change, make the shift. It's amazing. It's He's waiting, waiting on you. I, I want to entice you to move. I was in I was service last week. week. I believe it was last, last Sunday. Sunday. No, it was the Sunday Sunday before last. And, and I'm ministering the word. And all of a sudden I see a young lady. And I see a house beside her, like a hologram. And I look there and say, God wants to give you a house. And then God says to me, pray for people who want a house. And I called everybody that wanted a house. And when she came up, people came up praying, 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 praying. And all of a sudden, when this girl came up, the same young lady came up, I saw another house, and I saw the street that the house was on. And I told her, I said, you're connected to a house. I told her where it was at. She says, no, she didn't. She wasn't connected to it kind of startled me a little bit because I know what I see. I, I couldn't hear everybody in the room because I was focused on what I was doing. But I told her, I say, they lost this house, but now I understand why God wants to give you house, a house because it's going to break the generation. It's just generational thing off of you. And you, you, when God gives you the house, that you're never going to lose it like these people lost the house, whoever you connect to. And, uh, and the whole time, I didn't realize they say, the people in the church were saying, that um that was her great grandmama house where I called out. Then my phone started, people started texting me when I left the church. You were right. It was her grand her great grandparents' house. But she was too young to know it. I didn't know her. Why am I saying this? God needs his prophets because we orchestrate what is going on in the earth but he can't put his glory on you where you are you got to come up come up come up come up come up and you got to come out come out come out come out come out come out you got to come up come up come up come up come up and you got to come out come out come out come out come out 
Everybody stand. I'm getting ready to let you go. If you don't mind, can you can stand. I want to make an appeal. First appeal I want to make. If you're here and you're not born again, and I said something to you that makes you say, man of God, that's me. I had a super I had a superman ability, but I've been living like Clark Kent. And I want to get into the phone booth. I'm sanctifying and dedicating this altar for a phone booth. If you want Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, if we are watching by social media or wherever you're watching from, just simply put in the comment section, I want to be born again. But if you're in the building, and you know in yourself that something in your heart is calling you up, 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 out, out, out into a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to slip out from where you are and meet me down to the altar. This is for salvation. Up, up, up. Out, out, out. Up, up, up. Out, out, out. Anybody else? Anybody else? That's it. I want salvation. I want to be born again. Oh, glory to God. Come on, lead them to the Lord. You ain't got to wait on me. Lead them to the Lord. Anybody else? They didn't come in for prayer. They want salvation. Lead them to the Lord. Walk them through. Anybody else? Anybody else? They say, man of God, I need that phone booth. thing I want to do if you're born again and you know you're not in the right place you've been struggling in some areas and you need to get back to your phone booth I ain't trying to embarrass you but if you're going to have the power that God wants on you and the glory on you you got to get in your phone booth I call you now up 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 out 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 for rededication up, 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 out, out, out. Transform us. Transform us. Come on, keep moving. Transform us. 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 Ask them what they want. Make sure they renew us. Transform us. Minister Bussy, come on and leave one. Minister Staten, come on and help me real quick, sir. Leave one for me. See what it is. Rededication, pray for them, lead them back through, make sure they got it. Right here. Right here, Bussy. Right here for me. Go ahead, go one right here, sir. Well, that's good. Revival, 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 revival,
Come on. Come on. We got time. Come on. Anybody else? Anybody else? I got 60 more seconds. I'll give them to you. Who else God said up, up, up? Out, out, out. Your phone booth waiting on you. Up, up, up.
changing uniforms. Transition and transform today. Can we celebrate God for those that transform? Transition from one place, one state of mind to the next. Amen. Listen, we get ready to have communion, but before we take communion, we make sure that those that made that transition today don't leave. We want to make sure we get your information from you. Don't leave. We need that information. Somebody get that information for me. Oh, I didn't know you was here, Miss Faye. I'm sorry. I didn't know you was here. Listen, uh, on your screens are several ways to give. Tithing belongs to the Lord. It never changes 10%. Your offering should change, though. Whatever you were doing last year, you should increase it this year. If you haven't done anything, you should start today by putting something with your tithe. Because the Bible says in Malachi, tithe and offering. That's only to be a blessing to you. Amen. So on your screen are several ways to give. Allow the Lord to minister to your heart by way of giving. Those who are watching by way of social media. Here's an opportunity for you to partake in the worship part of giving. The information on. We see we have one online, also trans, transform. Went through tra two online transformation on the line, praise God. That's awesome. Amen. A day of salvation, amen. salvation repeat after me Lord today I make my mind up to transform and transition into your kingdom out of darkness into your marvelous light I denounce the work of the enemy over my life and I accept Jesus Christ as the head of my life from this day forward seal me until the day of of his coming in Jesus name amen
Father, we thank you for every seed sown. We know the principles of your word, that if we sow, it shall come back to us, 30, 60, and 100 fold. We thank you for your generous giving even the principles of your word. And we come with expectation that it will be a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the God of peace that's taking communion we're partaking in on the on the power of, of Jesus finished work is an opportunity to evaluate do a self evaluation ask the Lord that if anything out of, out of order in your life that he would correct it you give him permission now we pray that our hearts and our minds are in tune with God our spirit and our attitude are in tune with him and his word so that we do not offend heaven now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of his everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen the Bible says that when Jesus went with his disciples up into the other room upper room he took his bread and he broke, said this is of my body he broke it and he said let's eat together let's eat after he had given of this wine that represented his blood I'm sorry the bread that represented his body he then gave them wine that represented his blood may as we take communion together the power of his finished work as we partake in it show up in our family in our business in our relationships in our life because it's good he said for us to drink together let us drink father we thank you as we are partaken in partake it, partaken in the breaking of bread that represents your body and the wine that represents your blood may your finished work that you have done on the cross, in the grave, and now on the throne. Represent us in the earth and in a court case in the heavens that we may have a defender on our behalf. Thank you for giving us your name that gives us victory in the earth. And we shout your name, Jesus, together. One, two, three. Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>